Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to set up an Ethereum node on Raspberry Pi. Um, this doc documentation or this tutorial can be found at corgf.org. If you go to the menu, go to the how to section and you'll find the tutorial there. Now the first step is to, of course, gather requirements. Here you need a, a computer, a Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable, the Raspberry Pi 4 with at least 4 gigabytes RAM, uh, the power cable, a micro SD card for the operating system, and an external disk to store blockchain data. And once you got all those parts together, and you got a place to put, put uh, your Raspberry Pi, you can move on to step two, which is to uh, install Ubuntu on the micro SD card using the Raspberry Pi Imager software. And I already have that installed, and I'll just show you how easy it is to use. You just select an operating system to install, and I'm gonna select Ubuntu. And then once you select your operating system, you select the SD card plugged into your machine and click right. And that's how that's how easy that is. Now let's say you want to erase a existing micro SD card or external disk. You could do the same process, but instead of selecting Ubuntu, you select um, erase. And at this point, we're able to put our components together and boot up the machine. Now we can plug our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi board. And on the back of the Raspberry Pi, we have an Ethernet port. So we just need to plug in our Ethernet cable into our Ethernet port. If you're using Wi-Fi, of course, you don't need a cable. If you have an external disk, simply uh, plug that into one of the Raspberry Pi's USB, USB ports. And then uh, finally, the last component to plug in is our power cord. Simply plug in the power and turn the power on. And um, when, once you turn that on, we will go back to our regular computer and remotely access our Raspberry Pi. Now I'm on my normal computer and I need to determine my Raspberry Pi's IP address, which will allow me to SSH into the uh, Raspberry Pi and remote control it. So you could, there's many ways to do this on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Since I'm using uh, Ubuntu, I'm going to use the uh, Ubuntu Linux recommendations. And uh, in the core graph docs, I provided some extended documentation. If you're having trouble determining the IP address, I noticed using the nmap utility um, it works really well. So I'm just going to run an nmap command providing my local computer's IP address and that will scan my network for other devices on the same network. And the default host name for the Raspberry Pi is Ubuntu. So that's how I know that's the correct IP address. So I'll just copy that IP address and then I'll SSH into it using the command SSH, Ubuntu at, and just paste that IP address and hit yes to the uh, saving the SSH key. And uh, upon first boot, the password is Ubuntu. And then once you first log in, you'll be prompted to change your password. Of course, pick something secure. And when you successfully change your password, you'll be logged out and just simply SSH back into it. But use your uh, newly created password. And at this point, we've uh, set up Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi. And we can move on to some initial server setup and other optimizations we're, we're going to need before we run our, um, our Ethereum node. All right, so that would complete step two in, in this guide, and we can move on to the initial server setup. Um, what you want to do is, you know, for your convenience, I'm not going to... Some, some of these scripts take like two minutes, such as the, uh, the update and the uh, GoLang. So just copy and paste these over into your terminal and run them, let the processes uh, complete. And then you can move on to the assign a static IP address. And I'll do this one with you guys because it's a little more, uh, a little more complicated. So when you have your Raspberry Pi, it's gonna have a dynamic IP address. You wanna make that static. So run this uh, IP address show command to display your IP address. And you'll see the ETH0 net plan has that IP address and you wanna make that static. So to edit that, we have to do the go into etc uh, net plan, uh, and it's like this 50 cloud YAML file. 
And if I say more 50 cloud YAML, um, you'll see the we have some default content in there and it doesn't have our IP address. So in this documentation, I have this example YAML file. We want to replace that those contents with this example YAML file using our Raspberry Pi's IP address. So um, there's a few ways you could do this, but um, an easy way is to just open a text editor of your choice. For, for example, I have VS Code, so I'm just going to say new file and paste that example YAML file. Cool, and I'm going to paste that example YAML file and I go back into my terminal here and copy my Raspberry Pi's IP address. And I'm simply going to highlight the uh, example YAML file's IP address and replace it with the Raspberry Pi one. And the second one, you know, paste your IP address and then the last number just leave as one. And that's it. So copy that and we will go back to our terminal and we open the uh, 50 cloud yaml file in uh in vim and if i do that if i try to save it i'm gonna get an error though because i actually need to edit this in sudo permissions so i'm gonna do sudo vim 50 cloud yaml and then when that opens up i'm gonna click the i key for insert mode and now I can move my cursor around and uh, edit it as I wish. And now all I'm going to do is simply um, delete all the con all the default content. I'm going to ignore the hashtags because that's just comments. And I'm going to do Control Shift V to paste from my clipboard. I'm going to do colon WQ to uh, save the file. And um, now to add, uh, if I look at what's in there, now I have my new contents. And to make sure this net plan takes effect, I'm going to do the run the sudo net net plan apply command. And that should apply the new net plan and simply uh, reboot, reboot your machine and re SSH into it. And now we have a static IP address. Okay, I SHH back into my Ubuntu server on my Raspberry Pi. Now I'm ready for step four, which is to mount the disk. So I have to, I'm going to copy this command. This is going to list all the disks uh, that are connected to my machine. And it's you can see down here, I have my 120 gigabyte SSD that's listed here, and it's dev SDA. Um, and I'm just going to have to create a partition for that disk. I guess it yes. Cool. And um, now I'm gonna have to create a directory to mount that disk. And I'm gonna have to give it the right permissions. And then officially mount the disk. I just copy these over. Cool, so now the disk is mounted, but if I, now I have to auto make sure it automatically mounts every time it starts up. So if you do the sudo blkd command, you'll it's going to list the disk, and you're going to have this UUID. You want to copy that ID, because we're going to need that to uh, edit a file. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm just going to copy that UUID, because we're going to have to edit this etc fstab file. So I'm going to open my text editor and just paste that UUID. And in the documentation, I have this snippet here, UUID, blah, blah, blah. Just copy that, put that in your text editor, and um, copy that ID that you got from your terminal and just paste it in the snippet template here. Now there's an actual mistake here. In the beginning, it should be UUID, not UID. So the docs will definitely get updated. So, but just copy that um, snippet to your clipboard. Cool. And now let's uh, edit this uh, etc stab file. I'm going to open that in vim. So I'm going to do sudo vim etc fstab. Cool. And then click I for insert mode. Now I already, I already did this step to paste that in there, but I'm just going to do it over again just to show you. 
So I'm going to do just backspace, delete that, go to the next line, just hit enter, and then control shift V to paste that snippet. I'm going to do escape and colon right quit to save those changes. And that's it. So just do sudo reboot. And um, to check the disk was mounted, simply run the um, that uh, one command where it's df um, with that flag and dev sda. And you should see the, um, the disk mounted there. Okay, so now we're going to create a swap file. And I created two terminals up here because I'm going to demonstrate uh, to you some, something. So swap memory is going to help you prevent out of memory errors because the Raspberry Pi is only limited at four gigabytes. And let's say we need more RAM, but we don't necessarily have more RAM cards. We could create a swap file to basically substitute that space. So what I'm going to do is we installed HTOP before. So I'm going to run HTOP in one of these windows. And you can see that we have, we can see our RAM usage and other processes are running. And we can see there's nothing in swap memory. And we don't even really have swap configured. It says like eight kilobytes or something. So we're going to set that up. Now in the core graph documentation, I have a link to this external documentation. Since, uh, so to start off, we could just, um, run this uh, sudo swap on show and that's and if it shows nothing that's good that means swaps not enabled i'm going to see free h to show any free space and we can see that uh you know so there's nothing in swap cool now if i do this uh df flag h that's going to show me available disk space so i can create a swap file on now i see my default uh, sd card has like what 20 gigabytes free or something so that's good. I'm going to use some of that to create a swap, swap, uh, some swap space. So I'm going to do it is I'm going to use this command sudo fallocate, except you see, it says one gigabyte. We want to do eight gigabytes. We want to do double the, our, our original four gigabyte RAM. So I'm going to do sudo fallocate with this, uh, flag L eight gigabyte and forward slash swap file. Cool. Now we're going to verify that the, uh, it's the correct amount of space. So I'm going to do this ls uh, lh swap file. Cool. And the output should say 8 gigabytes, which is awesome. Now let's just simply enable the swap file. So I'm just going to copy this over this uh, to en enable root permissions. And I'm also going to copy over this here. Cool. And, um, and yeah, that is almost done. All right. So now we all you have to do is enable the swap file. Just copy that over and then do the, uh, pseudo swap on show. And then we should see something cause last time we didn't. So it says eight gigabytes. Awesome. Swap is enabled. Sweet. And you, and, uh, all right. So to make the swap permanent, just simply copy this over all right and then we're just going to use echo here just to edit the contents there and that's it so now we have a permanent swap enabled of course you could dive deep if you want to know all about swap but if we go to our h top you can see where we've had that swap area now we have eight gigabytes there so now we have our four gigabytes ram and we have eight gigabytes of like because let's just call it proxy ram so now we are good to go to run that Ethereum node and sync that chain with uh, sufficient resources. Okay, so to install CoreGuth, which could run Ethereum Classic and Ethereum and related test nets, we're going to build from source. To do that, we're going to git clone the repository and change directories into the cloned repository. Um, I already get cloned it, and um, I'm just going to change directory into the core geth repository. And when you're there, you want to run make geth. Now, this command might take a few minutes, but uh, basically it's going to build the uh, a geth binary. Um, and then once you do that, you're going to want to copy this snippet over and just paste that. And that's going to actually take that uh, binary and put it in your bin directory so it'll be ready to run in your system. Just run geth version. 
to run geth version and geth help to check that it's installed. Cool. So you have geth uh, in your in your local bin, and um, you're basically able to run core geth. Um, so let's say you want to run core geth, and you want to run, let's say, let's go with Ethereum Classic node. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we want to create a uh, directory in our mounted disk, and you can name the folder based on the network you're running. For example, this is the Ethereum Classic example. Just name the folder Classic or Ethereum or Mordor. Um, and then you can run geth classic. Uh, you can have a sync mode, but most importantly, you want to have the data directory to point to there. So I'm just going to paste this snippet in a text editor. I'm going to get rid of this cache. Um, you don't have to have it if you if you did your um, swap memory. So I'm just going to copy that snippet. And if I paste that in here, I hit enter. And I get a little error here, but because I had to do sudo, and then I'll put that command in. And now I have an Ethereum Classic node running on my Raspberry Pi utilizing the external SSD. All right, so I'm going to SSH into another, another terminal. And um, while that node's running in another window, I'm going to show htop here. And you can see that um, geth Geth is running Ethereum Classic there. Now, if I close this terminal, it would actually close the node. So what I'm going to do is cancel this process, and I'm going to rerun this process with with uh, no hub. So you see the process is canceled. So I've put no hub in the beginning of the command, and I'm just going to get rid of this. Um, I'm going to get rid of this ending comment here that says Ethereum Classic. And I'm going to put an and symbol at the end. So when you run when you run the command in this way, what it's going to do is run the process in the background. So you, you could just run the process in the background. You don't have to be SSH into the machine or anything. So to double check that the process is running in the background, you can do the jobs command or look at htop. If you uh, log into the geth console, you could do root f.syncing, and that would show you the live syncing status of your node. Um, and you could just do exit to exit out of Gith console. But feel free to view more documentation at coregif.org. And congratulations on setting up your own Raspberry Pi uh, Ethereum Classic or Ethereum node.